after working in engineering for quite a while, we decided to come together and do our thing. So in short, we tried to look at the things we could do with the most abundant resources we could find. And um, in the end, I think we zoned in on granite, which is something that is abundant in more than half of our country. So Good Hearts decided to focus, educate ourselves, and then come and implement that here. So we got trained in Czech Republic and Italy. Um, myself, I had quite a bit of training in engineering here. So after a while, we realized we had learned enough and then we tried to start it here ourselves. Hello and welcome to Faces of Ghana once again on Yen TV with me, Philip Abutiati. We are talking about a resource that is here in abundance, right here in Ghana, but it seems you are not really paying much attention to it. We are not tapping into it. And as our lenses have identified two brothers, actually, who are making good use of this resource. It's the granite, the granite rocks, the granite stones. They are using it for a lot of interesting things and we're interacting with them to find out how they are going about their operations, how things generally are. And so quickly, before we bring you the conversation, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. Let me introduce Nana say to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. All right. So bit about Good Heart, the Good Heart company. How did it all begin? How did you decide to start with your brother? Okay, after working in engineering for quite a while, we decided to come together and do our thing. So in short, we tried to look at the things we could do with the most abundant resources we could find. And um, in the end, I think we zoned in on granite, which is something that is abundant in more than half of our country. Um, we're only making use of it in crushing. So basically, mostly we crush it into smaller aggregates and use that for road construction, etc. So we wanted to find something else to do with it. Luckily enough, it had been done all around the world. We looked from Ethiopia to Italy to Czech Republic to Belgium to Germany. And most of their public areas, most of their uh, pedestrian areas, etc. are paved in stone. Most of these jobs I'm talking about were done probably a century or more ago. And if you look at the value for money they've gotten out of it, in the sense that they've spent money for one project and that has served them over a hundred years, it goes without saying that that is something that I believe is laudable to follow. So Good Hearts decided to focus, educate ourselves and then come and implement that here. So we got trained in Czech Republic and Italy. Um, myself, I had quite a bit of training in engineering here. So after a while, we realized we had learned enough and then we tried to start it here ourselves. We started on a very small scale. We're doing about seven square meters a day. At the moment, we're doing north of 100. Um, we hadn't done many works around here yet. So in the beginning, it was very slow to sell. Everybody wanted to see what it was, but we couldn't show them. But after the first year, we had a few projects. Now it's quite tangible and it's bringing us quite a lot of business. That is the fact that they are seeing it now. Um, the biggest end user for our product is definitely the roads industry. And now we've been able to break into that too. We've been able to do um, four roads within the Temaport as we speak. And these are roads that are paved in granite and are forever. Technically, those are the strongest road surface pavings we have in the country. Because granite has a compressive strength more than 120 newtons. The best pavement blocks you can get is 50 newtons. So technically, asphalt does not compare at all with respect to how hard it is. So um, in short, Good Hearts just sat to look at something interesting and we believe we found it. It looks like a new technology to the sub-region. Uh, for how long have you been in operation? We have been in operation for about four years now. And um, in the sub-region, there are a few countries that have caught on to it. That is namely Ethiopia. Rwanda, Zambia, Mali, all of them have found it, in, they found it prudent to do roads in cobblestone. So in Ethiopia, for example, the industry is employing about 200,000 people as we speak. And they are doing a good percentage of their roads in granite or in stone. The same thing is going on in Kenya. I think Kenya is supported by the Japanese, in Ethiopia is supported by the Germans. So these countries don't have as much granite as we do. But we haven't caught on to it yet. So. 
in the sub-region, yes, it's present. In Ghana, we're the first. So, so what's your source? You mine it here in Ghana, or what's the source of the, the rocks? Yes, we do mine it here in Ghana. We mine it in um, Kaswa, Shy Hills, and a few other places with just varying color. So if you've noticed, even on our site here, we have about five, six different colors of stone. And this is because we mine it in different areas. The colors of stone are so because of the presence of certain minerals. So the stone in one area with a certain mineral will come out with a certain color. And another area with another mineral will give it another color. Then so so what are some of the colors? There's black, there's dark gray, there's white, there's pink, there's blue, there's green. Um, there's streaky white, there's streaky gray. It just goes on. And I think in the south of Ghana alone, we probably work with about over 20 colors. And according to research, generally in Ghana, there's about 90 colors of dimension stone that we can make use of. Wow. Now let's talk about um, cost. Comparing these rocks to other ways of paving, which one is more cost effective or the more, which one is most cost effective? Um, My reason is any paving material, material you get is um, concrete paving of 15 newton strength. This will give you 120, so it's far higher. But now we are selling at the same price. Even mm -hmm. at your capacity, your production capacity. Correct. Even at our current production capacity. So um, generally, you'd pay, say, 150 CDs per square meter for very high end pavement blocks and you will install it and then get other materials to add to it. We are doing our material end installation for 186 CDs per square meter. So the prices are similar, but my material will last you a thousand years. This one will last you five to ten years. So when we do the value for money calculation, it's quite obvious. Now, what are some of the challenges? Because you know you're new in the industry. What are some of the challenges? The first and biggest of the challenges I've mentioned is financing. Um, it was the most difficult part of our startup. So in the end, we had to use our savings because we didn't get financing from the financial institutions. Well, somehow you can understand them also because we were trying to see experience, track record, et cetera. But we are still pushing that. And it's because of that, that we've actually applied to quite a few of the government initiatives, including the One District One Factory. So we're hoping to get financing from there. But yes, that is the biggest of the problems. The other problems come with the um, licensing at the Minerals Commission, which comes in very expensive logistics which is also very expensive you're talking about trucking you're talking about excavators backhoes and these are machines that are all seventy thousand dollars and above so for a startup that would be difficult to cough up and that is you have to still have money to operate you have to have money to buy your diesel your prepaid etc so our main challenges are financing logistics and i must say you're actually helping us answer one of them getting our word out there so yen.com is really being helpful and we appreciate that but that is also one of the issues. You have to get it out there. Some people still look at stone as a luxury product, but we've brought it here and we've made it economical. So now for the similar pricing you're going to pay in your pavement blocks to do a place that will last you five, 10 years, you can pay the same thing and get stone to do it and it will last you a thousand years. Now, we've been to your factory and we've seen some men on the ground. Could you tell us the strength of your workforce? How many people you've employed so far? At the moment, we have a workforce of about 30. And if we get financing, we're moving to between 150 and 200 straight away. The reason why we are, we were sure we can employ and employ easily is that we don't need any prior education in what we do to be able to work with us. So among our staff, I have former Galamsey people, I have Kaya people, I have totally uneducated people. But at the end of the day, they are able to work and they are eager to work. So the second you teach them, all you have to do is let them feel like they have value to your business and you'd be surprised what they can deliver so far they're doing very well we have employed about as i'm saying at the moment 30 we started with about five and we're hoping to do more we are also helping with employment in other industries because for example there's a zuriel that is here and they are the ones that help us with our engineering maintenance and we've also helped them to employ a bit more because they need more people to be able to service us We've also set up two SMEs at the moment with respect to our installation. We don't do all the installation ourselves. So we, are, we allow engineers to have their teams, we train them, and then they do our jobs and then they charge us per square meter. So they have their commissions per square meter and we do the supervision and quality control. So we have employed directly about 30. We have about three SMEs that work with us 
and I believe with financing, we're going north of 150, 200. Do you look forward to some collaboration, some sort of collaboration with government and other big agencies? Um, 100%. Every kind of business has its long-term goal as expansion. So, yes, we would like to talk to investors, we'd like to talk to people that are enthusiastic about the stone industry, to government agencies that it can be of use to. 100% would be, be interesting and would be helpful to our business. Now, I want you to say something to uh, stakeholders, to investors. I want you to look at their camera, say something to them, make a call to them. Uh, anybody who has the ability to invest in your business, what would you tell that person? Okay, what I would say is it's an amazing industry. It's now starting, so this is the time. We don't have competition, and in quality also, we don't have competition. Our resource is abundant. The only thing that stands between our resource and being able to make money out of this is machinery. So once we have investors, our, our, our raw material is tangible. I can show you a hundred years deposit of stone and it's not going to have to expire. It doesn't have to be maintained, anything of the sort. So it's a very, very safe investment. So what I'll say is if there are people that want to invest, that want to use the material, that have projects that need doing, we can definitely talk. If we have to pre-finance some projects, if we have to have a conversation about payment terms, if you're trying to invest long-term for direct money, monetary profits, or is it a shareholding structure, mutual business, we're open to talk. We're very, very open to talk. All right, let me, let me take us back a bit. I know you're into this with your brother. Um, how, what's the relationship? How is it like? Is he your older brother? Is he your younger brother? And how does he feel working with your brother? Um, he's my older brother. He's actually three years older than I am. And it's amazing working with him, I must say, because um, we're best of friends, apart from being brothers. And our skills and capabilities complement each other. So it makes it a lot of fun. It makes it easy to work. And I wouldn't discourage anybody that wants to work with family or a very good friend because it's the most things, but form the strongest bond. So yes, it's working. If you have loyalty between you, whether you're friends or brothers, it's not a bad idea to do business together. Just aside pavement and construction of roads, are there other things that the stones can be used for? Yes, um, there are quite a list of things the stone can be used for, but it, all, it definitely depends on the kind of machinery you have. At the moment, with respect to the machinery we have, we can produce cobblestone for flooring, we can produce wall cladding, we can produce um, filling for water-prone areas to operate and do a road structure that will not cave in during the rains, etc. And then we can do floor tiling if, if you are looking for the rough finish. So we do cobblestone flooring, we do wall cladding, we can do floor tiling, and we can do filling for water prone areas. And there are people, it's already constructed uh, buildings, and maybe there's a little area, a little piece. Could you just transform um, such areas with your works? 100%, and we'd actually love those kind of jobs because one of the most common uses of granite here already is landscaping. So if it comes to a two square meter area where you have your coffee in the morning, or if it's a little walkway between the house and the boys' quarters, or it's a little paving under the drying line, we're more than interested. We will do it. And we want to get the product out there so no project is too small. Your final words. Stone is life. Let's use stone and build this country in an amazing way. Simple as that. Stone is life. This has been faces of Ghana. If you are thinking of constructing uh, a place or you're, you're working on a project, you could contact the Good Heart Brothers. Contact number is 244 or 243 And our location is industrial area just off the Dadiban Road. And we're, we, you can find us on Google Maps and you can find us on Facebook as well. Good Heart Korean Construction.